All right, so let's talk about server services. Um, so we're going to focus basically on the server side coding of the framework in this tutorial. Um, not just services, but also the modules. So um, again, explicitly the server side coding on the framework. And we're just going to kind of do a quick overview, um, nothing super intense, and we're not going to cover all the features of it necessarily in this video. Uh, we will get to that later. So a service in, um, is an object, a module script explicitly really, um, that is initialized at runtime and exists throughout runtime and only one exists. It's like a singleton, kind of like a service you'd have internally anyway, like the point service or the badge service. Um, like that, but you're creating your own. Um, and similarly, you can have methods and events and properties, and all that good stuff. So to create a service, I'm, again, I'm using the Arrow Game Framework plugin. Um, on the services <coughs> folder, just click on it and there's a little plus sign right there. Uh, I guess you don't have to click on it to see the plus sign, but click on the plus sign and you will get a new window um, that lets you create a service. And it gives you a lot of information or a lot of uh, things you can type in. You can create your server methods, client methods, and events. We're not going to worry about any of that right now. We're just going to name it. Um, just going to call it test service. Create it, and you see it shows up in the hierarchy, and it opens up this script. Um, and it comes with some code already there for you. Uh, this kind of boilerplate setup code for the framework. Um, every service starts out just like this. And so you have it defined. Um, again, it's just a table. Um, it has a client table in there too, but we'll get into that in another video. Don't worry about that. <clears throat> and it also comes with two methods, start and init, short for initialize. Um, these are really important to understand how to use them. So when the framework first starts up, when you run the game, um, once it requires all the modules, the first thing it does is it goes through and calls the, the init method on every single one of the service modules, one after the another, um, in order. So you know it, it doesn't do it asynchronously. Um, you know it, it does one, waits for it to finish, does the next. So this is really helpful just to set up your module code, whatever you need to do. Um, again, one of the big benefits of this framework is that it lets you uh, communicate with other modules within the framework really easily. Um, this init function is where you need to be careful. Basically, you, you don't want to start calling other um, services within your initialization function because they might, they might not be ready. Um, and that's up to your own discretion for the services you make, but for the most part, it should be considered unsafe to call other services from the init function. You can reference them, um, and that's fine, but I uh, probably don't want to do anything with them. Um, that's where the start method comes into play. So once, once all the methods successfully invoke the init method, once that's all complete, it goes back through all of the modules and asynchronously calls the start method on all of them. And so they all get their own thread basically to run upon. Um, they're all called at the same time. And so here is where you can uh, start invoking other services within your framework or whatever, um, doing more of the heavy lifting for your module, if you need to do any. In a lot of cases, sometimes you'll have no code within these two methods, and that's fine. Um, in fact, it does work if you just don't have them. It'll just pretend like it, I mean, it just doesn't exist, so it doesn't call them. Um, but for good practice, I recommend always having it. Uh, so that's what a service looks like um, at the bare bones. If we ran the game right now, it, it won't do anything. The modules uh, were created, the services were created and everything, and it ran. But again, it's not doing anything. So for instance, the start method, we could just say print hello from test service. Um, and we're going to say start. And here we're going to say init. So again, it should say init first and then start. And that's exactly what we see. So those get executed at the beginning of the game. To add in our own methods, it's really easy. You just do it like any other module. 
So test service, um, we're just going to create a simple sum method. So to execute this, we're just going to run it within our um, start method. So print the sum of 2 plus 4 equals self sum 2 into 4. And if we execute the code, we should see it print that out. Yep, the sum of 2 plus 4 equals 6. So it's really easy to write uh, a method for your services. Super easy. So now it comes in the question, how do you actually execute code from other services? How do you even reference other services? So what's special about um, this framework is that when the services are created, it actually injects a few things into it. Specifically, it injects self dot <coughs> self dot services, self dot shared, and self dot modules. So self dot services just references the services table again. Self dot shared references your shared code here. Um, shared is simply modules that can be accessed by both the client and the server. And modules references your server side modules. <coughs> So we have some services already existing within our framework. Uh, let's, look a little, uh, let's look at one of those. So we have the data service, for instance. And using our little code referencer thing here in part of the plugin, we can see some of the methods. So data service set global key value. That's what we want to do. Um, in order to reference the data service right here in our code, all we have to do is say local data service self.services. Again, services is just a table that's injected into our, our um, service here. Dot data service. And that will reference our data service service. Now we can use it. Data service set global <coughs> test. Uh, just write 32 to it. If we run it, we, sh we should get an error or a warning saying that we can't set data. Um, or maybe we can. <laughs> Sometimes it works. Oh, you know what? It's caching it. And then it's going to try to set it. Now we're going to hit the error. Yep, OK. So set async fail. Can't write to data store from Studio API. So it clearly tried. So that's good. So that's working. All right. So that's uh, like high level version of services. Again, we wrote the sum method right here. So if we wrote another service, we could call that sum method. So for, for instance, I'm just going to open up the data service. Uh, just ignore any of the code here. Um, but we could say self.services. Uh, test service sum. Something like that. All right, so th those are your services, but you also have modules. So modules are not services. They're not executed at runtime, but they're actually what's called lazy loaded. What a lazy loaded item is in programming is basically it's, it's a data structure or whatever that isn't actually initialized until you try to use it. Um, that way you can have a lot of modules um, that you might, may use, may not use, that you want to reuse for other games and whatnot, but you don't actually clutter memory um, because if you're not using it, it doesn't get loaded. Um, so there's already one called data store cache, which is used by the data service. Don't worry about that. Uh, let's create a new one. And a lot of times you mo your modules, you want to make them object oriented objects. So we're going to do that. We're going to create a cube. So I call it cube and I'm going to mark is object. Check that, create it. And again, it's going to give us some boilerplate code here. So um, you can see I can call cube.new. Let's say we want, to, we want to give it a size. And let's mark that within it. And let's write a method. Cube get volume. Volume of cube is the width times height times length, which we're going to say the size just represents all those. So we just have to cube it. So return self.size cubed. 
All right, so there's our cube. Um, so within our test service, let's create the cube. So first we have to reference it. So cube equals self dot modules dot cube. And again, um, if I don't ever write this code, then the cube module exists there, but it's never actually required. But as soon as I first try to access it like this, it's actually going to initialize the cube object. So now I need to create the cube. So my cube equals cube.new, and we're going to give it a 3 by 3 by 3. So now I can say my cube volume equals my cube get volume. And run it. And we get my cube volume equals 27. So sweet, that works. Oops. All right, so that is, uh, again, high-level overview of server services and modules. Um, we did not talk about exposing things to the client in this, but we will in the next following videos. Um, so, yeah, check those out too.